Hello, welcome to the James Cooley Show. It's your life, and I'm your host, Dr. James J.C. Cooley. And, and I tell you, we got an absolutely fantastic show coming your way today. And I want everybody to sit back, grab you about five or six bags of popcorn, because we're going to do it. And Todd, you know, what I'm ta- you know what I'm talking about when we say grab about five or six bags of popcorn. You know, it's going to be a great show. It's going to be an absolutely great show. And, you know, like always, I, I got to bring on my, my absolutely wonderful co-host and executive producer of the show, Michelle Cooley. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great. This is a this is a great day, James. I'm really excited. Excited about our guest today. Uh, pioneer, pioneer, I would say. And, and we're going to learn all about her and hear her story and hear the things that she has done in her industry. Okay, let's let's not give away too much now, because uh, I want to get the radio portion of it going. So, Todd, let's let's do this. It's your life is sponsored by James J C Cooley. Life is a series of circles and cycles, phases and stages. These are your experiences that teach you the lessons of life. You can either ignore them or embrace them. Welcome to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. James is a motivational speaker, author, military veteran, and founder of the James Cooley Foundation. James is here to equip you to strive for greatness and to overcome adversity. It's time to get equipped today for the challenges of tomorrow. Now, here's the host of It's Your Life, James Cooley. Hello, welcome to the James Cooley Show. (laughs) It's your life, and I tell you, I am so happy, so proud to have this guest that we got on the show today. And we're whether you listening on the radio, if you listen on the radio, you can always call in 1-866-577-2473. Or if you're watching it on AM one of the networks, E360 TV, uh, YouTube channel, if you're watching on the YouTube channel, please subscribe. Please subscribe. Uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, or whatever mechanism that, that you are checking us out on. Uh, come on, we'd love to have you be part of this conversation. So how you doing out there, Michelle? How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you, James? Everything's well, you know, going good with you? Everything is exciting because I know that uh, we are about to embark on a cruise in about three days. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm so excited. I mean, we haven't even packed, well, packed yet or figure out what we're going to take. But I think we have an idea. But I'm just excited about relaxation, vacation, and that spa on the cruise. Oh, my gosh. Forget it. I am looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to all that. But you know what I'm looking forward to is this great guest that we got on the show today. So just like I was telling the television audience, everybody sit back and grab me about five or six bags of popcorn because we getting ready to do this. So, Michelle, I I, I want to get started because I want to bring this guest on as quickly as possible. So uh, can you first tell our, our, our viewers and our listeners what the title of the show purpose of the show and tell them about this great 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 fantastic guest we got coming up yes the title of the show is nancy underwood a pioneer in the environmental health and safety industry and the purpose is getting to know one of the leaders in the osha consulting field and the president of underwood general engineering and environmental consulting services in nancy underwood discuss her path in becoming a part of the environmental health and safety industry and talk about the services of her company, um, UGE-ECS, and what it provides and discuss the rewards and challenges of being a health and safety engineer. Now, Nancy's biography is long, so I'm just going to hit the high points. So as a second child, Nancy Underwood was born in Vancouver, Washington, into a family of eight children. At five years old, her mother moved to Century, Florida. They grew up without their father in the home. And at 10 years of age, her mother lost her sight. And Nancy made the decision that she would grow up, graduate from high school, go to college, and help her mother raise and educate her younger siblings. Nancy was given a two-year scholarship from the First West District Baptist Church Convention and graduate with an AA degree from Pensacola Junior College. She moved to Los Angeles and continued her education and graduated from California State University with a BS in environmental health and safety engineering and a teaching credential in accident prevention and risk assessment in two years. Five years later on down the line, after working her profession, she was able to bring her four and a half sisters and four nieces and nephews at different times out from Century Florida and further their education. 
Nancy is the president of Underwood General Engineering and Environmental Consulting Services. And she started working six months prior to graduating from college as a health and safety engineer trainee for Travelers Insurance Company. Nancy is proud to say that she's completed contracts with FAA, Removal Replacement, Navy Southwest, U.S. Coast Guard Base Closure in Hawaii, Managed Asbestos Removal from U.S. Embassy in Foreign Countries for Potential Environmental Cleanup, Interrupted by 9-11, JPL Contract, Interrupted by 9-11, Locally, the City of Compton, and the list goes on. The James Cooley Show, It's Your Life, welcomes Miss Nancy Underwood to the show. Hey, 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 welcome to the show, Nancy. How, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm very blessed to be standing here before you and Michelle. I'm very thankful to be on the show and a guest and to share all the blessings that I have been blessed with from God. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Nancy, since Michelle was not able to uh, really hit the, all of the buyers, can you please tell our audience? Uh, where you grew up and who raised you? Yes. Well, after leaving Vancouver, uh, my mother went to her hometown with her seven plus one other kid in her stomach to Century, Florida. Um, I was the least like of the eight, and therefore there were challenges. Whereas um, nine months later, my grandmother took me and raised me, my grandmother with two other senior citizens, Ms. Anna Rogers and Mrs. Montgomery. So they were in their 60s and 70s, but they taught me love, they taught me forgiveness, and they taught me education and uh, to really work hard for what I want and get an education. And one thing they said, you can get everything, you get an education, you fell, you didn't make a mistake, you can always rise again. Education is something that some and no one can take away from you. You keep a good reputation. You can move on and grow. And as I began to uh, understand, as I grew older, I really took that love with me. I took the love of God, the gift of the universe, being in tune with myself affirmations that my uncle Fergie used to teach me every summer he came home 30 days he would spend with me and he would always teach me about the I am I am I can do it I am was the most powerful two words that he would always teach me and let me tell you something as I grew up I began to read the Bible and do you know the I am is used in the Bible uh 719 times in the Old Testament, 508 times the New Testament, 211. And I I based my whole growing and spiritual being that is in me, what my grandmother and the two senior citizens, a best friend that taught me, and it became a part of my life. I had challenges that was very, very painful to get through, but there are powerful words i am i can and i will i and like those words i like those words a lot so can you share at least one of the challenges you faced growing up nancy yes i can um as far i don't remember anything prior to five years old but um the challenges that i faced uh growing up was how i didn't understand how and why a mother could love seven kids and hate one. Um, I really fought for the, the love of her as I grew up, but I never got that. So I had to learn to tell myself every time and all the time from the negative energy, the negative um, um, things that was thrown onto me as I grew up with that family. I just had to tell myself, I can do it. The challenge was tough. And then I had an accident when I um, I was an x-ray technician. And this was a challenge because I had to go to school with a back brace and cervical col cer uh, pelvics and cervical strat uh, tractions I would have to have on a, any given time. So the challenge was I had to drive to school, come back, schedule my classes, come back home, pick up my daughter, take her back to school with me, have dinner, playground, 
and she did her homework in the back in my classroom every night. So it was a challenge to know that I could get through this. How was I going to make it through this? I was not going to sit at home for five years and wait for a settlement. I had to get up and get out and do it, whether I was sick or well. That was a serious challenge to get that last two years of college. And the reason I graduated so early in two years, I was going summer, winter, spring and fall, day and night, because I never knew when I was going to be in the hospital with cervical and pelvic tractions. As a matter of fact, I was in the hospital uh, during the graduation, but I kept A's. And so therefore my instructors called me at the hospital. You got it, you've got it. But there was one, there was one class that I didn't have a lot. When I started working for travelers six months prior to graduation, there was one course that I had not taken that was anthropology, Margaret Mead. So my whole six months out there, I'm like, I've got to see if we need Margaret Mead or if we need anthropology. I went back to school six months later to take the final exam. We do not need anthropology, not Martha Mead and environmental health and safety engineering. <laughs> <laughs> no, you mentioned education. And that means that somebody other than yourself had to have inspired you. Uh, who was that inspiration that uh, inspired you to uh, uh, get back in school, stay in school and, 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 and do it that way? My grandmother was a person who seriously inspired me because uh, the challenge that I was facing and a lot of hatred in, among that family. You can't buy love. For one thing, I learned that um, the challenges that I was facing, you really cannot buy love. But I promised, I, uh, I talked to God when my mother was had lost her sight. And then I was on my knees after at her bedside. If I go to college, would you love me? If I help raise your kids and never, there was never a yes. So I had promised God that I was going to do this. And then after I grew up and graduated from college and was financially secure, God came to me in my mind, it's time to do it. I'm, uh uh, you know what I went through? No, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. And then the next year, you promise you're going to do it. I'm like, Father God, come on now. You know what I went through. They don't deserve it. Not anymore. God says, you're going to do it. And I did it. Wow. I, I did it. I never gotten any um, appreciation or, or any love. But the gift of God has guided me and protected me and helped me to grow that I can give to others. You don't have to be a to have a family member to have a family mm -hmm. we are all in this universe every person every place everything is interconnected with love in this universe and we are one once we realize that it will become a better world to, because you give love to anyone um when i'm traveling or when i'm uh, moving around about during the day if i see a maintenance crew i'm gonna smile and give them love if i see Anyone, I don't care what creed or color they are, I don't see color. I'm going to. And that's something I have to tell you hold that thought because uh, we got to take a break, but we're going to come back and we're going to pick it up. And then we're going to have a, a special guest who's going to join us. And I'm not even going to tell you who he is right now, uh, <laughs> but uh, we're going to bring him in as well. So I tell you, if you want to be part of this great conversation, dial 1 866 577 2473. Or you can go to the comment section and just ask this uh, a young lady any question that you want to. It's your life. I'm Dr. James J.C. Cooley. And we'll be back shortly after the break. There's more stories of greatness to help you overcome adversity. Coming up on It's Your Life with James Cooley. <laughs> Really get a chance to know who you are. And once you know who you are, you truly know who you are, love who you are. Love who you are. Your masterpiece. Love who you are. Love who you were born to be. Love, love me some me. That's what I'm talking about. 
Back him up. When you leave high school, you gotta know today or tomorrow, hopefully today, what your plans are. Hopefully, you know, there is no bad decision unless there is no plan. Create, collaborate, commit with confidence. Commit with what? Confidence. Commit with what? And everything that you do. and cycles, phases and stages. These are your experiences that teach you the lessons of life. You can either ignore them or embrace them. Welcome to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. Dr. James Cooley is a motivational speaker, author, military veteran, and founder of the J.C. Cooley Foundation. Dr. Cooley is here to equip you to strive for greatness and overcome adversity. It's time to get equipped today for the challenges of tomorrow. Now, here's the host of It's Your Life, Dr. James Cooley. Hello, hello, welcome back to the James Cooley Show, It's Your Life, and I tell you, we got this fascinating young lady that uh, is our guest today, and uh, I tell you, she really put it out there. <laughs> if you want to be part of this conversation, all you have to do is go to the phone, one 866 2473 that's the Radio KCB San Diego FM 96.1 AM 1170, the answer, uh, and uh, you can also... Uh, go directly to uh, wherever you're watching this at and put any uh comments in or ask a question you can even just say hello if that's what you want to do but um i want to pick this back up and i want to bring our special guest in right now and uh, you might you might know this young man right here uh, uh <laughs> how you doing dr e dr. i am well good afternoon everybody how are you Hey, man, doing absolutely wonderful, man. I, I know you've been been listening to uh, uh, Nancy and uh, and I tell you, entrepreneurship. You, you know that's that's what we all are. And I want you to join in on the conversation as well because we we get ready to find out why Nancy, what 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 triggered her, what made her want to be an entrepreneur and doing all the great things that she's doing. So. I'm like, and so Nancy, can you tell us, did you always want to be an entrepreneur? Yes, I remember. <laughs> yes, you got to hear this. When I was a little girl in Florida, uh, everybody wanted to take risk, uh, jumping off a fence or, or swinging or whatever it was unsafe. I'm like, oh my God, you need to stop that. That's unsafe. That's not safe. <laughs> and then as I grew up, I remember always with my daughter, I always wanted to make everything safe around her. And so when I I was in studying, when I was, my grandmother raised me. So I was, she had this huge house with she had 13 kids. So she had 12 or 13 bedrooms. But when I came to live with her, she was overprotected of me because of all the danger and all the experiences that I've had in the past prior to coming to live with her. And so I had a, there was a bed that was in in her bedroom and I always, every, I could see into the future every day and I didn't understand it, understand it. And I had angels walking with me, which I thought everybody had angels. And by the way, they don't have wings. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have wings. But anyway, my grandmother would always want, I would take care of her. She always wanted to become a registered nurse, like her daughter, 48 years prior and then here I go to Central Florida, break the poverty mode and get degrees and motivate and help the other in the family 
to get degrees and to educate them and the nieces and nephews that came to live with me in, in Los Angeles. And my after becoming a registered nurse, I decided, oh man, there were two students, uh, Larry Spiegel and myself, and the doctor would always call on us to do uh, formal techniques, x-rays when they're in, uh, involving surgery, because you can't touch any of the garment or sheets. If you do, they got the restore. And so therefore we were good at that. And then the supervisor always complained because they could not get their experienced 20 year nurse uh, technicians to do that. I decided, oh, Professor Howard taught me radiation safety. I'm gonna go and talk to him. Is there anything else that I can get involved? I even go back to college. And he said, okay, great, health and safety. Well, OSHA was, there was no law, no OSHA regulations back in 6970. <laughs> so I decided, okay, he explained to me, you can become a health and safety engineer. You can become your own boss and you can rule the world. You can make all the changes. You're the first health and safety engineer in the state of California. You're the first to get the generation air class, the first at license and everything. That's how I became interested. And, in, and so I graduated um, well, with a bachelor of science degree. And the same year since I was injured, I was had taken everything in a catalog. So I graduated with two degrees. And this is the best field that I have ever been in, in industry, because my major was engineering, my minor was psychology. And my textbook was body language. And my instructor explained to me, you, once you get into your own business, you're gonna be communicating and working in an aerospace engineering uh, tech, and you're gonna work with people, uh, supervisor management all over the country, all different nationalities. You need to learn how to handle that mentally. And, and it worked because uh, being the first, they would challenge me. They would challenge me because I'm minority, I'm black, I'm smart and intelligent. So therefore they would challenge me. We're not gonna correct this unsafe condition. We're not gonna do that. And they may use a preventative or whatever. I let them finish talking. <laughs> and I say to them, thank you very much, but here are your recommendation. I need X, Y, Z completed at a certain time. I'll see you another day. The next day I could eat out the, they could palm of my hand, they apologizing for what they said. Uh, how they treated me the day before. I handle it and I, I would go to the golf course at the end of the day so I could hit a bucket of balls. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I became interested in industry. And um, I love giving, I love helping. My office was in Linwood, right next door to Compton. I lived at in Plow Delray at the beach. And I would, um, and to make a long story short, that was my best contract, 12 consecutive years, they didn't have environmental health They say they didn't have risk assessment. They didn't have even insurance, but I saved them hundreds of thousands of dollars. They became self-employed in their own insurance. And I trained one young lady to become a health and safety engineer. I helped get uh, uh, young ladies off the county back then in the early, eight, late eighties. That was where I fell back to work and it wasn't even in, in place because <laughs> I love giving, I love helping. Wow. And, you know, it's just, uh, uh, it's amazing because uh, right now OSHA, I mean, no business can operate safely without having uh, an, an OSHA personal OSHA department. And you was one of the pioneers, especially from a, a, a women's perspective. Doc, Doc, you got anything you want to add to that? Yeah. Hi, Nancy. So one of the exciting things about things that you've been doing when I met you there at the veterans event, um, you were sharing about some of the existing things that you're doing. So can you explain a little bit about how all that great things that happened to you in your past with OSHA and all your certifications uh, um, has led you to some of the things you're doing today? Yes, uh, I have a uh, one of the first, I'm the first female minority in the state of California to get a general engineering class A contractor license. So when you get the class A, you've taken every license, all 50, 67, however many in the, on the board gives. So also I flew up a 30 day, June, 1992 and July, 1992, I got the asbestos contractor license. Working in the industry, um, it was an SBA 8A 
certified firm. For the first five or six years, you expect SBA to help give you contract. No, you got to get out there and market. You got to get out there and be at their doors when they're saying no. You, If they don't say no to me, I'm coming back. You got to say yes or no. And so therefore, no one ever said no, FAA. Uh, we market, I market with them and then we won a $27 million contract back in 89, 90. And, and I, I must admit, I subbed out far too many millions. But nevertheless, the contract was completed. It's um, removing on the ground, storage tank, um, uh, installing above ground, double wall, interstitial cobalt tanks at every airport that FAA goes in the state of California, Nevada, Arizona, Hawaii, Islands, Mexico, Samoa, Guam, and San Juan, Puerto Rico. Nancy, what do you love about being in this industry? I enjoy being in this industry because I love a challenge. I love achieving and, and uh achieving my goals. It's a challenge for me being a female and a woman, and I enjoy giving back. I uh, have the opportunity, and whenever I have the opportunity to speak with any of the high school students again, I enjoy giving back. I, downtown LA, uh, there was a young lady I saw, she was barefooted, and it was raining. And so she was in a little coffee shop here inside the facility, and I asked her, where are your shoes? She said, I don't have any. And she said, I wear about the same size shoe you wear. And I said, what size? She said, the eight, eight and a half. I said, just sit right here. I went upstairs to my home and I went back and gave her my most expensive tennis shoes. I, Because I know, like God says, give you something of your best, you're going to get it back in abundance. So I asked her what home shelf she said. I went down to Broadway shelter. I gave some of my wardrobe and I got a letter to tell me that five young ladies wore my suits and they all got a job. And I was so excited about that. So I, I enjoy giving back and I enjoy teaching, educating and training and, and moving forward and more knowledge and, and uh, a lot of opportunities I am looking at today when I'm marketing give uh, an inspection free to look at the services that are opportunity there. Mm -hmm. And it always works to give something first to get what you want in abundance coming back to you. So I'm welcoming that opportunity again now that pandemic is over. Wow. So um, how do it feel? And I, well, I just want to start this right now, but we're going to come back because we got, we got to take a break in about a minute. How does it feel to be the best, I'm the first black African American to get a first class license in the state of California from the California contractors? Can you start that off real quickly? And then we got to take a break in about 35 seconds to we'll pick it up. Yes, it feel, I feel very proud because I had the opportunity to use that license and have a major See, when you have the past performance and experience and that type of license opportunities, I had tenure as a subcontractor to Tetra Tech. That gave us an opportunity. Okay, Underwood, we were your subs. Now you're going to become our prime because you've got to build a track record. And I love it. So I built that track record. Now I'm ready to do it again with GSA schedule because my guys, they were 50 and 60 and 70. They used my contract to retire. Hold that though. Hold that thought. We got to take a station break. But, you know, we're going to come back and we are going to pick it up from there. If you want to be part of this great conversation, that's 1 866 577 2473. Or go to the comments and ask this young lady any question you want to. It's your life. I'm Dr. James J.C. Cooley. We'll be back shortly after the break. To help you overcome it.
and CEO of the JC Cooley Foundation, Options Opportunity Slash the Choice Program. Our primary mission is to help build the foundation of our youth and young adults and communities. And we encourage everyone to dream big, think big, and be big at everything you do. And the way that you do that is, first of all, you got to believe in yourself. You have to believe in yourself. You have to know that you are here for a purpose. You also have to be able to step out your comfort zone and do things that you, that you probably didn't think that you can do. Noah Dingley here, producer of The James Cooley Show, It's Your Life. And the new audio version of James' book, Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet, is a must-have. James shares his true life story of struggle and success in America. It's both a cautionary tale and a roadmap to achieving the American dream. Get the new audio version of Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet, by James Cooley on Amazon.com or wherever audio books are sold. Life is a series of circles and cycles, phases and stages. These are your experiences that teach you the lessons of life. You can either ignore them or embrace them. Welcome to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. Dr. James Cooley is a motivational speaker, author, military veteran, and founder of the J.C. Cooley Foundation. Dr. Cooley is here to equip you to strive for greatness and overcome adversity. It's time to get equipped today for the challenges of tomorrow. Now, here's the host of It's Your Life, Dr. James Cooley. Hello, welcome back. Hello, welcome back to the James Cooley Show. It's your life, and I'm having so much fun. And just listening to Nancy, I tell you, I mean, it's it, it, it's kind of funny. Funny meaning that it's excitement. It's so much excitement how, how she tells the stories. And you can just see the enthusiasm uh, in her face as, as, as she tells these stories. But... Uh, Hey, Nancy, I think I got somebody on the line that's calling in. Hey, hey, hey Todd, do we have the introduction m music or, or it's too too late to get it? Um, I do not have it queued up, but we do have the one and only Danger Man on the phone. Let's, let's get Danger Man on, on the line. <laughs> How you doing, my friend? J.C. Cooley, I'm doing great now that I hear your <laughs> voice. What an amazing show today. Oh, man, you know, uh, this guest, and I know you know her because you told me, she is amazing. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, Miss Underwood, she's, she does amazing. She's an amazing entrepreneur, and she's, I, I know that uh, she, I'm just so proud of the work that she's doing. And I'd like to ask her um, uh, what one piece of advice that she has for young people that would like to inspire and, and that and, and be just like her one advice i can give young people is first to understand the love of god and love themselves to forgive and to work hard decide what they want and never forget what they want believe in themselves believe in themselves first and once they believe in themselves, they got the power of God to help guide them, to strengthen them. And the most important thing is give love because you can be the most smartest person in the universe. You can be the most educated person in the universe. But if you don't have love, you lost it all because love conquers all. Absolutely. Love the show, JC, too. Hey man, miss you, man. You gotta get you back on real soon, man. You know, so, uh, this is a an absolutely wonderful show with this young lady. And because uh, she looked like she's like 20, 25 years old. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, uh, all the enthusiasm is there. So, like, it's just it's just it's just there. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Awesome, man. And I love the new format, man. You guys are rocking, man. Huh? Hey, man, we do a big or we don't do it at all, man. <laughs> That's just how that feels. I love it. We do a big. I love you know. it. That's great. And in my, my background, you can see a little of my company uh, logo and information. Can you see it? I, I can see it. I want to talk about that. Yeah. Well. That, we can we get ready to pick. We we get ready to pick it up from there. You know, <laughs> you know, so hey, danger man, always, always a pleasure, man. Thanks for calling in, Thank man. You. Thank you. All right, brother. Keep All up right, the man. good work. 
Got, got to, man. Got to. Now, now Nancy, prior to the break, uh, we was asking you about uh, being the first uh, uh, in California, the state of California contractor states, uh, state license board. And um, uh, can we talk about that a little bit? Then I want to talk about uh, your companies that you have in the back. So uh, uh, tell us a little bit. Tell our, our viewers and our uh, about my interest in the class A. Okay. Uh, and this is good for small businesses to understand too. When I uh, decided that I wanted to get a class A, we were I was managing the 105 Glen Anderson Freeway, whereas as environmental health and safety engineering and managing the asbestos uh, removal. We had our technicians out there that did air monitoring and reporting. And so after uh, Tetra Tech was my major sub. So Tetra Tech and I had a meeting my first year being there. So they said, Underwood, you're so smart. Why don't we just develop a relationship for the first 10 years and at the end, and we'll be your subcontractor at the end of 10 years, go get a class A. And I was traveling back and forth to EPA when uh, OSHA first passed the law under asbestos and the exposure of the uh, where uh, those who work in, worked in shipyards or it was used as an installation and a coolant. So therefore they were being exposed. There were no laws and regulations. And I decided that, okay, fantastic. And EPA says, go and get a class A license. I'm talking about doing super farm projects and go get a class A license. So it, when it got the class A license, and I was very proud that I became the prime, the small business prime. And see, small business, you need to get with a major player as your sub, and um, you as their sub, develop a long track record. You got that 8 a you got to market it. And I went to market for FAA, Navy, U.S. Coast Guard. And they were, and then I had other sub kind of major players as my sub. I'm very proud of that because I'm the first who did it. And not only that, I marketed with the FAA 27 million says, and you have a small business have to bond those project. I told FAA, I went to my major player, sub, they're a billionaire. Listen, you guys are gonna do most of my work. Now I need for you to bond this 27 million. And I gotta go to FAA. FAA, I, my major player said they're gonna provide the bonding. And I told them, I want you to add UGE and ECS on your bond and FAA on your bond. <laughs> now, and they stand before FAA. Yes, Underwood and I, we are family. We're not gonna let our follow them. You have to build a track record. They will stand there. You can demand what you want. So I'm very proud. And I, I'm hoping that some small businesses are listening because you've got to really knock the doors down. And before pandemic, I was in Washington, D.C. and State Department phase every month for a year. They looked at, my God, is that Underwood? You may as well give her all those contracts <laughs> the fees because she'll be back here next year. <laughs> so, <laughs> so managing the asbestos cleanup in our embassies. We started in Frankfurt, West Germany. We went to a lot of different countries. And it was... Pakistan, even down to El Salvador and San Salvador, <laughs> all around. So I'm very proud of that. And I'm very thankful because you have to be able to, you, you need to know who you're working with. You have to develop a long-term track record, even with the guys that you are managing your, and then let me tell you something else that's so exciting. We've been doing business with Cal currently. We've been doing business with Caltran, preparing their compliance plan, our CIH for 14 years. Now Caltran along the freeway slopes, district one through 12. Last year, we've completed the first ADL in soil uh, disturbance and removal. My company, my CIH, I wrote the lead compliance plan combined as abatement because it was the first one. It was bought off by Caltran engineers, designers, and and uh, environmental. So we completed it. Now we are managing the ADL as uh, area deposit with lead and soil along the freeway slope. This is new and our guys are out there. We have a project starting up tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm very excited about that. That sounds very exciting. So Nancy, what are the your long-term plans for this company what are the long-term goals that um you set um forth for this company 
for the rest of the time with this country. I have this company, I have a long term goal, a five year term goal. Uh, right now, developing three and a half years with a billion dollar player who is my subcontractor. Everybody knows I don't want to call their names right now, but they are billionaires. They are my subcontractor. They provide hazardous waste. They remove uh, above, uh, hazardous waste and hazardous chemicals from above, above ground storage tanks and also do the removal and replacement. And so therefore we have a track record working with California American Water for the last three and a half years because I'm getting my GSA schedule, get on schedule next year. Therefore you cut that schedule comes with a $20 million contract once you sign it. But it's first five years, one year, one mil, three, five years. But at the same time with the past performance and past track record could still go after 30 million because I got billion dollar players that say, they're not going to ask me to stop. <laughs> and I'm looking at another major player that Dr. Hall introduced me to. I'm looking forward to doing business with them. And I'm not calling their name right now, but Dr. Hall know who they are. So I'm looking forward to working with them. And I want to be able to train, give back, help uh, other small business that are growing in this industry to, to introduce them or any other industry that wants to do federal projects and don't understand how to put a team together. That way I can assist with them and helping them build and understand what they, the mistakes that I made, such as doing a 27 million with guys that are 67 years old and my contract was their retirement. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I that's a whole lot thought. We 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 got to take a station break. We got to take a station break, but when we come back, we we bringing Dr. Hall back in the picture. Uh so I tell you what. I hope you still got two bags of popcorn left. I told you grab five or six bags. You know, we're going to take a break and we're going to come back with this absolutely magnificent guest. Remember, it's your life. Dream big, think big and be big. We'll be back shortly after the break. speaker, author, military veteran, and founder of the J.C. Cooley Foundation. Dr. Cooley is here to equip you to strive for greatness and overcome adversity. It's time to get equipped today for the challenges of tomorrow. Now, here's the host of It's Your Life, Dr. James Cooley. Hello, welcome back to It's Your Life. I'm um, Dr. James J.C. Cooley, your host, and you know I tell you, uh, this guest, this guest, this fantastic guest, wow, she, she stole my show. <laughs> which is a good thing i mean i mean 
It is so wonderful having you on here, Nancy. It's so wonderful, wonderful. And I uh, also have my great friend, Dr. E, over there. Now, you, you mentioned his name in the last segment. And you know what? I'm getting ready to put him back on the spot so he can ask you some more questions uh, and uh, just educate us all. And if you want to be part of this great conversation, it ain't too late. one 577 2473 Or go to the comments. Ask this young lady or either the great doc or myself or Michelle, any question you want to. It's your life. Hey, Doc, I'm going to turn this over to you right now. So uh, anything you want to say to this young lady? Yeah, absolutely. It's been phenomenal um, hearing her story, uh, as well as being able to speak life into the future of the youth. You know, that's important. So, Nancy, if you can kind of share from your perspective, again, any new entrepreneur, especially with all the minority um, set-asides and military uh, contracts that's out there to work with the state of California and the government. Can you share with some of the first steps that they should do to be able to get one of these contracts? Yes, I most certainly can. Thank you, Dr. Hall, for asking me to explain this question because I really would like to share this. Entrepreneur, entrepreneurs, the first thing you need to know, number one, have faith in yourself and God. But the next thing you need to know your product and our services like the palm of your hand. Know every inch of everything that you are doing, every NASCO. Know everything about your business. Number one, after you learn about your business, the next thing you want to sell your business. You want to buy, you want to sell yourself, you want to market yourself. Then before you even think about going to federal, get a track record with local city, county, state. Make sure you have at least five to 10 years of at least five to 10, 10 years, I would say, because that's when I started after my 82 to 92. 92 is when I took off. 10 years of past performance, city, county, state. And listen, small businesses, get letters get letters of how well you perform your services. I got them. How well you perform your services. And then you're going to roll into being a major contract, maybe a, to a prime, and you're going to have subcontractors. Make sure you have letters and make sure your subcontractors have a track record as well. Minority woman, black on, let me tell you something. And minority, any of you, when you get with these major players to get these major projects after that past performance, you are the DBE, MBE. You don't have to bring on a handload of DBEs and, and they don't have no money. They don't have to. Come on, let's face it. You don't need to bring on a whole long load of DBEs. You've got, you're the DBE, you're the MBE, you're the WBE, plus you've got different nationality. You've got a Hispanic DBE in the hub zone in your office. You've got another DBE, other small businesses. When you have that past performance, you can go to a major player and say, okay, let's start developing a, a working relationship. And once you have a past performance and a track record and you already got the city, county, and state, then you can go before the federal. First thing they're going to ask you and they're going to want to see it, your past performance. The next thing you're looking for a 20, 15, 20 million dollar contract. XYZ, who are your major sub? If you say a tech to tech, AE con, Turner, oh, come on, let's get busy because they are definitely not going to let you out of your face. <laughs> Small business, DBE, I got three DBEs. I got one. Uh, give us a call later. I'll come back. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what, Nancy? What are the takeaways do you want to leave with our viewers and listeners regarding this topic? Um, regarding this industry? What I want to leave with the audience is, number one, have faith in yourself and be true to yourself. Learn your business and then above all, have faith in God, set goals. And when you set goals and you meditate and you pray, prayer is one of the most powerful thing in the universe. And I pray a lot and I meditate and I set my goals. And when I do that, I know that prayer without words don't work. So you really have to 
you uh, sit down and decide where you want to, what you want, where you want to go, how you want to get there, how many years it's going to take you to get there. And don't let no side, anyone that is negative and don't have the same, on the same page with you're on, then you don't need them in your life. You want to stay focused and you want to believe in yourself, believe in God, above all the power of the Holy Spirit. And in Jesus' name, always close your prayer, honey child, because a lot of people say, my prayer ain't answered. Close it in Jesus' name, you'll get an answer. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. E, you back up again. <laughs> No, thank you so much. Uh, you know, this has been an awesome show. There's a lot of information and, and a wealth of knowledge in this young lady. So I, I think, Nancy, as we close out the segment, I just think that, um, you know, share a little bit about the contracts you just, you know, were just awarded and why you think uh, you were awarded them. The contracts that I've just been awarded uh, with DOT comes from a long list of past performance and experience. I remember when I was attempting to get certified to do uh, with the lead compliance plan, the, re the uh, soil remove all of these certifications on my small business. Well, the city of Los Angeles told me they weren't going to do a darn thing. So I'm like, uh-uh, I deserve this. I Well, we'll take your general engineer. Oh, no, you won't. So I fought them and fought them for three months. I went back and forth in and out of their offices. I end up meeting with the state, the contracts, uh, his chief of contracts with the state of California. After meeting with it, went all the way up the ladder. After meeting with the chief, the chief says, well, it's under where you're a tough cookie. I'm getting ready to reverse that no decision, give you everything you asked for. And then when I went in to get the certification, it was under where you tough. You went against the city of Los Angeles. The state of California made us change our mind and reverse our decision. Small business, you have to stand strong and believe in yourself. And don't let them just tell you anything. You know, you can do it with love, you can do it with respect, you can do it legally and just keep fighting. And I am thankful to be a part of this uh, meeting and, and, and podcast because I tell you, we can win and there is so much love in the universe because I say, I wanna say this because my thoughts about events and people are creating my emotions. My emotions are creating my life. I am master of my thoughts. So the two words in here, your thoughts and your emotions. Wow, wow. You know, so uh, just to change it a little bit because you do so much in the communities, a uh, danger man told me about you uh, and giving back, but uh, you also speak, or uh, I mean, I'm, we all, I think we're speaking a lot before uh, COVID. Can you tell our, our listeners, we got about two minutes left in the show. Can you can you tell them, are you still speaking? Are you getting back on the speaking trail? Or, or what, what are your plans? My plans are to actually work with Public Works again, to be a guest speaker to junior high and high school students. Also, the younger uh, students in uh, sixth and seventh grade, I spoke before, a small business group and a family group. And I saw them again at a large event and they all ran up to me. Oh, we enjoyed your speech. So I think it will be great to speak to those who are in seventh and eighth grade before they get to ninth and 10th and 11th, because that way they, they are really, really interested. So yes, I will. And then I would like to be a guest speaker again. And I, I like to give, um, I'm, I uh, want to need to meet with Caltran because I like to train some of the small businesses who don't understand how to be at these projects on on the freeway, how to go through the specs, how to go through the bid books, how to uh, retrofit back and see who won and why and who they used uh, to do a debriefing. And I want to be able to give um, um, you know programs or class webinar, and so I need to be the right person so I can help other small businesses that they will understand and learn how to bid these large projects as well, because that is an opportunity now. I have letters, current letters of, of outstanding services from, from the contractors at Carol's Trans, and, and it's really a great opportunity because now we are actually on the contract, uh, Southbound 110, Carson uh, exit, and doing uh, uh, area deposited lead and soil project oversight and monitoring and reporting. And so I'm very excited about that. 
it is a great opportunity and it didn't take overnight. It took me 10, 12 years and now I can master that and they all know me. So when they want something, to, give it to UGE. Give it to, I love that. <laughs> hey, we're down to the last minute of the show. And uh, for people that are inspired by this, this great interview that we're having, how can they reach out to you? How can they get in touch with you? How can they learn more? How can how can they get you uh, to help them? I mean, in that uh, they they want to be your clients. Yes, I'm glad you asked that very much, Dr. Cooley. I I'm going to give you our website address um, is U G E, like we have in the back here. <laughs> I like that. Instead of U G E N E C S, you can get me on the website uge-ecs.com uge-ecs.com and then my office number is area code 213-625-1016 213-625-1016 and then you can also reach me on cell at 310-894 Three one five four three ten eight nine four three one five four. Wow! You know, I want to thank you for taking the time to, to come on the James Cooley Show. It's your life, and you know where we encourage everybody to dream big, think big, and be big at everything that uh, they do. And I also want to bring you back on if you ever have time in your schedule. We'll get you back on here. And we will continue to educate everybody. So, uh, hey, thank you so much uh, for taking time. Thank you so much, Dr. Dr. Hall, for tuning in. Michelle, you know you're my heart. and You, you, you keep everything flowing. And uh, our listeners out there, hey, I want to leave you guys with a final note. Just like I said, dream big, think big, and be big. And we'll be back tomorrow. Same thank time. You. Same thank place. You. Thank you. It's your life. Thank you. I'm Dr. James J.C. Cody. Thank you so much.